who pay for you. Oh, no. And I'm going to put it here on the chair. And when you're tired, we'll pick up the bouquet and put it on your mind. <laughs> All right. You awesome. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, so I just want to um, read something quickly from Marcy Gallo, who couldn't be here, she couldn't come up from Vegas, but she wanted to have me read something for you. So, um, hello to everyone who's gathered to commemorate the 60th anniversary of the founding of the DOB. I, spend, I send special love and congratulations to Phyllis, whose passion for telling it like it is never kept her from having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Phyllis, you may not know that one of my first memories of you is from more than 30 years ago, about 1984, when we met at a meeting of the ACLU of Northern California. A group of women were organizing the Bay Area Feminist Anti-Censorship Task Force. That's a mouthful. Um, they fact. Um, you were there uh, with Dell, of course, and even though I was intimidated a bit by your status as the famous foremothers of all things lesbian, <laughs> you so impressed me with your knowledge and your wit, and I wanted to get to know you better. Luckily for me, I had that opportunity. You welcomed me to your circle of friends and compañeras over the next few decades, including the many times I pestered you and Dell to tell me more stories about DOB. And for those of you that don't know, uh, Marcy Gallo is the one who wrote the book Different Daughters, uh, The History of, of the DOB. I'll also never forget your talent for organization. During one of my visits to you in about 2002, you were able to produce names, addresses, and telephone numbers for dozens of former daughters, some of whom you haven't seen for years, but still recorded in your address book. I remember you saying to me, don't just talk to us, go talk to them. We just got things started, but it took the efforts of a lot of women to make DOB. You gave me that advice in your living room on Duncan Street, one of the lesbi legendary lesbian sites for activism and great parties. <laughs> then and now, Phyllis, I thank you for opening your home and your heart to me and to so many of us and for being such a staunch and sexy role model. <laughs> you show all of us. <laughs> social and social change. <laughs> I, I hope to see you again very soon with big love from me and Annie, Marcy Gallo. Mm -hmm. okay. Next, um, I'd like to bring Laura up here. Laura Thomas is the person who put this whole thing together, an intern of mine from Sonoma State. Come on up, Laura. Uh -huh. <laughs> to read uh, something that actually came from our archives um, uh, and relates to what Marcy just said. Yes. Um, yeah, I was uh, going through the archives and I came across this piece. It's um, titled A View from the Closet and Don and I both thought that it kind of accurately showed the um, personal and long-lasting impact that the DOB has had. Um, so it starts. On Wednesday evening, January 10th, a day to be remembered in infamy, I ventured outside my closet to poke my nose into the world, my world. I knew there was a world out there because I'd heard about it and occasionally was witnessed a small portion of it at the study in La Cave. But that view I had seen always resulted in a headache the next day and the feeling that somehow viewing my world from the bottom of a scotch glass just wasn't where it was at. <laughs> Back to January 10th. I've been out quite a while, if you'd like to call peeking from the confines of the closet being out. I attended DOB's Wednesday night rap session for the first time. I went to the rap session with few expectations of what I would find. I discovered, not to my surprise, that my sisters were no different than the general public, whomever they are. In their discussion, the sisters talked of the problem which most groups must face at one time or another, that of instigating genuine interest and participation in the activities of the organization. There were many good suggestions made, but the basic problem still remains. How does a group stir its apathetic, non-participating, potentially active members into acting in their own self-interest? <laughs> there are many and varied reasons, particularly why we as gay women choose to remain silent. Yet I wonder just how much we really are protecting ourselves by doing so. When I think of life, particularly gay life, I think of a self-imposed prison more than societies building that prison for me, regardless of the situation. I also think that if life and love are as precious as they appear to be, 
then it is extremely important that I do not permit these treasures to be contained within four walls, which are man-made. Living from breath to breath is just not where it is at. If by doing so, I am only nourishing the body and not the soul. If we view life as an evolutionary and educational process, perhaps we may draw an analogy. Using our physical senses of sight, taste, touch, smell, hearing, we are communicating to and receiving communications from the environment around us. If we do not sample new experiences of the senses, such as light and dark, bitter and sweet, hot and cold, fragrance and stench, soft and loud, we do not evolve and learn. We may, by ill use of our senses, begin to believe that all things are dark, bitter, hot, smelly, loud, etc. Quite the same if we do not venture out, walk with different or similar people as ourselves, if we do not risk, conquer, fall, step forward, or sometimes backward, we do not evolve and learn mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. We do not begin to feel either apart or as significant as others. Neither do we develop a self-image from which to determine the need for growth or change in our lives. Thus, inside our self-imposed prisons, we learn only a small fraction about ourselves and virtually nothing in reference to others, particularly those like ourselves in the gay community. Regardless of the risk which may or may not exist if we step forward, our love and understanding of one another would sustain us over the rough spots of really and truly coming out. We owe it to ourselves to take our rightful place in society and by example lead the way for others to overcome their own fears and ultimately the fears of society. Yes, there is a world out there, our world. It is much larger than four walls and a lot better than a prison.